Oh, I guess that's it. All right, that wasn't so bad. Yo, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to be discussing the build that I'm currently using on my Rogue in Diablo 4. I use this very same build at level 59 to defeat the level 70 capstone dungeon to unlock world tier 4. As you saw at the very beginning of the video, that was Elias, the boss of that capstone dungeon. So I did make a couple changes from that moment, but I only improved upon it. And I'm going to show you what I use now. I'm going to give you a rundown of all the abilities that I use, the gear with all the stats and aspects. I'm going to talk about uh, my skill tree, my current Paragon board. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of insight on how I go about combat and we'll kind of do this nightmare dungeon a little bit that I'm in right now. It's a tier 21 nightmare dungeon, which means the enemies are going to be level 75. As you can see, my level is 63. And you're going to see that I take out all these enemies really effectively. This build can take on much higher nightmare nightmare dungeon tiers, but this is just an example for now. So let's talk about the abilities that I'm using and why I use them. So on number one here, I have a poison trap. As you can see, there's only one rank in it. I only use this really just for the knockdown. As you can see, I have a modifier on it where, or two modifiers where it deals 10% increased poison damage to enemies standing inside of it. And it's because they get knocked down in it, that just increases the overall damage that they're kind of soaking up. And then it knocks the enemies down for 1.5 seconds when it activates, which... When it comes down to combat, 1.5 seconds being knocked down that long is a very long time and allows you to lay down so much damage. And not only do they get knocked down while you're shooting them with a bunch of arrows, but also they're taking that much more extra poison damage as well. The next thing I have on here is Shadow Imbuement. Again, only one rank on this. We only really use this to cause the explosions. The explosions upon killing an enemy when they are imbued with Shadow... It, it, as you can see, it does 2,713 damage right now. So, not only do they explode with that damage, but also you get 15% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies affected by it so that they die faster. And then Shadow Imbuance Primary Explosion makes enemies vulnerable. You're going to see when I show you the example, uh, the, the purple explosions that happen, anything hit by that becomes instantly vulnerable for two seconds. And because there's going to be a lot of widespread explosions from this, there's going to be mass vulnerability and they're all going to be taking increased damage from one another. Not only because they're getting injured, you know, they're dropping low health, but also they're vulnerable. And so it's just a lot of damage flying around like crazy. The next one I have is Cold Imbuement. I only have one rank in this one as well. As you can see, I'm not putting a lot of ranks in my active abilities. I only use this one to take out elites. I specifically use this for elites. So as it reads, imbue your weapon with frigid energies. Your next two imbuable skills deal cold damage and chill enemies for 25% per hit. Now this stacks extremely well with another ability I'm going to show you in just a moment. So where you're going to basically instantly freeze elites and you're going to be able to take them out extremely fast because of it. So as you can see here, I have the modifiers where cold imbued skills have a 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds. So you're just calf you're just putting vulnerable all over everything all the time, which is amazing. Let me make sure I don't like get kicked out here. And then I have another one where it says lucky hit critical strikes with cold imbued skills have a 20% chance to instantly freeze enemies for three seconds. Now this is just, uh, and again, it's going to stack with barrage later on. I'm going to talk about that in a moment where you're just kind of going to have these momentary instantaneous freezes on enemies that may be elites or not elite, just extra things being frozen just for the sake of freezing them and taking them out of the fight for a few seconds. Now this one here, Shadow Step, you can see I have a lot of item contribution, but there's actually only one ability rank in this. I only put one skill point into this. Now this ability is what allows you to quickly single out any enemy that you would like to. It become unstoppable and quickly move through the shadows to stab your victim from behind for X amount of damage and gain 50% increased movement speed for 2 seconds afterwards. And then I have the modifiers damaging an enemy with shadow step increases your critical strike chance against them by 8% for 3 seconds and enemies damaged by shadow step are stunned for 2 seconds. So not only do you get to instantly get behind any one enemy of your choosing, 
but also they are stunned for two seconds. Again, this is really great for singling out elites so you can take them out rapidly. It's just, it works very, very well. I love this ability for that. And here we have Puncture. I love this ability. It's a, it basically just throws, you know, three daggers. I love it. Throw blades a short distance, dealing X amount of damage. Every third cast slows enemies by 20% for two seconds. Critical strikes will always slow. And then the modifiers are gain two energy when Puncture damages a crowd-controlled enemy. As you've seen with all the crowd control that we have, we get tons of energy back with this. And then Puncture now throws three blades. By standard, it only throws one. This modifier is important. Puncture now throws three blades in a spread, each dealing 35% of its base damage. Hitting an enemy with at least two blades at once makes them vulnerable for two seconds. Again, when you when you use this on an, any enemy, specifically elites and bosses, it makes them instantly vulnerable. When you're point blank range, it's hard to miss. And so you're getting that free vulnerable on them for two seconds. So you're just doing that much more damage. And then the, the bread and butter of this whole build, Barrage. This is the only active ability I have that I put all five ranks into. Unleash a barrage of five arrows that expands outwards, each dealing X amount of damage. Each arrow has a 20% chance to ricochet off an enemy up to one time. Ricochets deal 40% of the arrow's base damage. The modifiers are barrage's ricochet chances increased to 100% for arrows that damage a vulnerable enemy or critical strike any enemy. And every third cast of barrage makes enemies, enemies vulnerable for two seconds. Again, just throwing vulnerable all over the place here. So you're just applying vulnerable on mass with this build. And when you combo that with a bunch of critical strike damage and a you know, critical strike chance to proc that critical strike uh, damage, then you're just you're just basically nuking your enemies near instantly. It, it's highly effective and I can't really talk well enough about how well this is this has been going for me in leveling this rogue so quickly. Now, the next part of this, I did choose to go with combo points. As you can see here, there's specializations. I chose to go with combo points here because it goes so well with Barrage. As you can see in the middle of this tooltip window, combo points increase damage and arrows fired. So by default, by default, this shoots five arrows. But combo points increase damage and arrows fired. So when you have, you know, a max of three combo points, which you only have to land three basic attacks. So one, two, three at, you know, when you build up the right stats, you hit them so quickly and then you get instantly that much more damage and three extra arrows on top of it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It, or, you know, it's just eight arrows, rather. It says eight arrows. So it just it just ups your damage so much. Now, I did use Inner Sight with this for a while. And this can definitely, you know, go a certain distance. Because unlimited energy for four seconds just allows you to spam barrage like crazy without having to stop. Which is nice. It does allow for those moments of damage. But I found that it often starts when there's only a couple enemies left in the fight. Because you're doing so much damage already. So I found Inner Sight to kind of be a waste of a specialization and then preparation every 100 energy you spend reduces your ultimate skill cooldown for four seconds this is completely useless for this build as you can see i'm not using an ultimate ability whatsoever i am not using any ultimate active ability at all so that that is completely useless don't even consider that for this build so i went with combo points because it just goes so well with barrage in this case now uh let me talk about how i go about combat what i like to do what I like to do when I go into combat, I like to instantly use shadow imbuement and then I will fire shadow imbuement from afar. So that way I can proc shadow imbuement on as many enemies as possible because the more widespread it is, the more explosions you're going to have. So I'll try to do that from range. And then as I'm moving in, I will drop the poison trap in the middle of the group. I'll let them all huddle up on me, drop the poison trap. And then it's just going to explode and knock them all down. They're going to take a ton of poison damage. And while you're in the middle of them all, you're just going to keep shooting barrage. Because you're able to fire in all directions with this, like nonstop like this, you can target any enemy you want and just light them up. I, I, I don't know if there's a term for this, but essentially it's like a shotgun. When you get up close, all these arrows are going to hit whatever target you're right next to. And so that's going, you, what you want to do is try to target enemies that do have the shadow imbuement on them, and then you're going to watch them explode. 
and then you're going to see a wave of explosions go through the crowd when when that one dies it's going to cause a bunch of other smaller enemies to die to the point where sometimes you don't even have to target elites they're just going to die naturally by all the sh all the shadow explosions that are going to happen now, another way that I like to go about combat as well, if there are elites in the crowd, I will instantly shadow step to them. I will just hover my mouse right over them, tap four, and you'll instantly teleport on top of them. And then I use cold imbuement and fire barrage at them so they instantly get frozen. Again, because you're point blank range, and this shoots a minimum of five arrows, as you can see here, um, like how many arrows is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's five arrows. So you can see 25 per hit. When you hit 100%, they're frozen. When you have five arrows, that's 125%. So they're going to be instantly frozen when you combine that with barrage. And so from there, once they are frozen, you can, you know, drop the poison trap underneath them and then just keep shooting barrage at them. You can even use shadow imbuement after that if you would like to. So that way you can start spreading some shadow throughout the crowd of enemies. And you, again, it's going to just be like an instantaneous melt of everything around you. It's wonderful. It, it's a it's a great combo and it's proven highly effective for me so far and i really hope that it maintains doing this in higher levels but for now i'm i'm loving it so much okay so the next thing let me show you my skill tree here the skill tree is you can see that i again i've put very few ranks into active abilities except for barrage a lot of the stuff that i have going on is in passives I'm not going to discuss every little bit, but I'm going to show you what passes I do have and talk about why. As you can see, I start here with Puncture. I go to the right side of the tree to Fundamental Puncture. I have Barrage, Enhanced Barrage, and Improved Barrage. I like Improved Barrage more than Advanced. I just like the idea of putting Vulnerable on everything even more so. Of I find Vulnerable to be more important than Critical Strike Chance at this point in time. Because you can build up so much critical strike chance and you're firing so many arrows anyway, you're going to be critical striking all the time anyhow. So here I have Sturdy. You gain 12% close damage reduction. You're going to be up close and personal with enemies despite this being a ranged build. You're going to be up close anyway, so you want to build up as much damage reduction as possible. This is a big help. The next thing I have is siphon, Siphoning Strikes. You heal for 3% of your max life when you critically strike close enemies. This is an absolute godsend and will make you feel like an absolute tank. Do not skip out on this. This is very important, especially when you have a lot of critical strikes happening all the time. Do not skip out on that. Okay, the next thing I have, again, Shadow Step. I only have one point in. It says Item Contribution 6, as you can see there. That just happens to be what I have, what, what I have in my gear right now. Enhanced Shadow Step and then Methodical, I do like more than Disciplined. You know, Disciplined is nice because it does, you know, reduce the cooldown when it damages an enemy. But I prefer this because the stun just kind of helps take out elites. You're kind of single targeting them out, getting rid of them quickly, helps you survive. Uh, here I have Weapon Mastery. And, you know, all three ranks in this, it just makes it so, you know, whatever weapons you're using, you get that increased status on them. It's just nice to have around. Uh, these are just item contribution ranks. I don't really care about those for this build, though I will say that dash is a good ability if you'd like to change out for that. That's nice for kind of mobility, getting in and out of fights. Um, here we have poison trap and then enhance poison trap and subverting poison trap. I like subverting more than countering, again, because, you know, poison trap having a 30% chance to reset imbuement skills is nice. But the 10% increased poison damage when they're knocked down in it, you may as well. That's free damage, especially when it comes to elites. Uh, here we have exploit you deal 18 percent increased damage to healthy and injured enemies this is a no-brainer absolutely take that like i think i think every rogue build should have this i don't see why you would ever skip out on that there's no reason to in my opinion and then here malice nine percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies another obvious one with how much vulnerability we're putting out there against everything you may as well take that free extra damage okay the next tree i do have one point in shadow imbuement and then one point in cold imbuement I did put a couple of ranks into Frigid Finesse because a little bit of extra damage against the enemies that you are freezing, if chill, chilling and freezing with the Cold Imbuement is just kind of, it's kind of free. Why not? You have points to do so, so I actually might change things around and put another point in that. I also put a point into Deadly Venom, uh, not for the poisoning damage, but just to unlock so I can get to this next part of the branch where you gain 3% increased attack speed for each enemy poisoned. This makes it so when enemies are around you, you're standing in the middle of the group, 
you have all these enemies knocked down in the poison trap, all those enemies are poisoned, you're getting that 15% extra attack speed, so that way you can build up those combo points faster for your barrage. You're just gaining extra attack speed, you're throwing knives around like crazy, combo points for free, and then you barrage that much faster. It just wipes the board quicker. And then we have one point in Shadow Crash, not because I like so much the idea of Shadow Crash, but again, I wanted to unlock the next part of the branch, we're consuming shadows. This helps so much in sustaining your energy. Each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage, you generate 30 energy. This is so free. It's 10 points per level, and I recommend you just max it out so that way your energy is just flowing freely, because when enemies explode with the shadow, you're just giving yourself that energy back for free. Alright, the next one, I have three points in Innervation. Lucky hit, up to 30% chance to gain energy. With how many arrows are flying around everywhere, you're just gaining that much more energy, like for free. It's very passive, and it is noticeable that it happens, so you may as well take it. Uh, here we have Alchemist Fortune and Second Wind. I really don't like how these ones work. I don't want to rely on increased Lucky hit chance for spending energy. I'd rather just have it happen naturally, like Innervation. And then this one, non-physical damage, you deal 5% increased lucky hit chance. Eh. I, I, I mean, we already do so much damage and everything as is, and this is already a 30% chance with everything flying around. That's actually pretty good stats, so I, I really don't care for those. Uh, down here, we have Adrenaline Rush. I only put one point in this, but, you know, moving around and giving you, you know, increased energy regen, I mean, that's kind of free. Putting a point in that is definitely helpful, but the big thing here is haste. While at or above 50% max energy, you gain 50% increased movement speed. While below that 50% max energy, you gain 15% increased attack speed. So basically, the game is reading whether or not you're in combat and giving you some big buff for the situation, which is beautiful. May as well take it. That's very free. There is impetus here. After moving 15 meters, you gain 7% increased damage. I didn't really find that too enticing, so I just didn't do it, but it's not a bad option. And then for the key passive, I went with Precision. Critical Strikes with Marksman Skills, which is what Barrage is, a Marksman Skill, grants you Precision. You gain 4% increased Critical Strike damage per stack of Precision, up to a maximum of 20. When you reach Maximum Precision, your next Marksman Skill is a guaranteed Critical Strike that, that deals 40% increased Critical Strike damage, then consumes all stacks of Precision. This is a, an unbelievably good passive that stacks with Barrage because you're going to be throwing out criticals in random directions all the time and then getting that one guaranteed that does 40% increased extra critical strike damage is very good against bosses, a elites as well as bosses. It, you, you know, you can go up against any boss. You're going to notice when this procs. You're, you're going to see your damage skyrocket and you're going to be like, what the heck just happened? It's precision. It's something that happens so passively and absentmindedly, and when it pops up, it's amazing damage. I can't really say that I like any other key passive with this, but Victimize is okay, I guess. Dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 30% chance to cause an explosion, dealing 23% of the original damage to them and surrounding enemies. That's okay, because vulnerable is going out everywhere, but I feel like this is just better for taking out everything around you that much faster, because... The way Barrage works with the Ricochet, you're going to be dealing that one huge critical strike hit in everything in a larger area than Victimize will. And so that's that's kind of why I went with this over that. I just like it more. And then Exposure, that's for traps. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're specifically doing damage with traps, that's what you, what you, what you want, but that's not what this build is about. Okay, so next up is Paragon. You can see I've only got two boards at the moment. I, I haven't actually built this out very much yet, but what I have going on so far is pretty killer. Uh, so this is the starting board. I went over to Prime. I put a uh, canny glyph here for the extra non-physical damage, which helps out your imbuements and your traps. And then the bonus of non-physical damage increases all non-physical damage an enemy takes from you by 1% up to 10% for 15 seconds. This just makes it so the more you're casting your imbuements, the more damage you're doing with them. And that's that's too free to not take. And then skillful, 20% extra damage. I mean, yeah, <laughs> pretty obvious. And then this next board, I put down the exploit weakness one. 
uh, whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take 1% increased damage from you for 6 seconds up to 15%. And again, this is just a, a passive stacking of extra damage with all the vulnerability you're throwing everywhere. It's very free, and I feel like the earlier you take this, the better. So that's why this is my second board. Uh, I did skip over unassailable. I don't... I, I don't really need the damage reduction from vulnerable enemies yet but that is something that i may take at a higher level i skipped that for now uh i i prioritize going over here the 20 percent extra vulnerable damage and 25 percent damage to injured enemies is nice and that bonus an extra 10 percent you know it starts out at 10 and getting the extra 10 makes it 20. Uh, i did get this up here as well 32 percent extra damage to elites and there's some extra damage to elite nodes all around it so Definitely take that the earlier the better because, you know, when it comes to leveling up, elites are the bread and butter of experience, and that's just a great way to build up that experience faster. The faster they go down, the faster you clear dungeons, the faster you get back into another one. And then we built up up here. This is the latest that I've done so far. I actually found this just today, a little while ago, before I made this video, this combat glyph. I, uh, I love this glyph so much already. It is so good. For every 5 intelligence purchased within range, core skills deal 2% deal increased critical strike damage, so that's great. But the big thing for me here is the additional bonus. Skills that critically strike restore 12% of their energy cost. This increases your mid-combat energy sustainability so much. Because again, critical strikes are happening en masse and you have that guaranteed critical strike with your key passive, right? And so because of that... All those critical strikes that you throw out, all especially if you combo it with your combo points, you're throwing out eight arrows of plus the ricochets of all that critical strike damage, and you're getting 12% of that energy cost back every single time. That's a guaranteed big boon of energy, and that's basically a free barrage at that moment. So you get another free attack immediately after that. Incredibly good. And so that's where I've left off with Paragon so far. Again, this is not final. This is just what I have so far for this build, and it's been highly effective. Now, let me go ahead and show you what this build is capable of by showing you a little bit of combat here. Again, we are in a level, uh, sorry, a tier 21 Nightmare Dungeon, as you can see on the right side of the screen where my mouse is. So that means the enemies are going to be level 75. I am currently level 63, as you can see down here. And I'm going to be able to take care of these enemies very, very quickly and easily. And it's going to be great. As you can see, the numbers are flying like crazy. These enemies die very quickly. They're much higher level than me. And already it's just working out so well. I right, just find a channeling shrine, so I get free energy for a moment. Let's see if we can find a nice big group to show you guys. Here we go. Let me just freeze this guy just to show you. And so there you go. You can see how effective this is against this group of enemies that are much higher level than me. I am world tier 4 as well. I just got world tier 4 today and already this build is going very well. I want to see if I can find an elite so I can show you how I go about that as well. Let me just run to the next room. Ow. Pain. Okay, here we go. Drop down the trap so they all fall into it. Very good. We're just barraging like crazy. We're throwing in our our uh, basic attacks. We keep barraging. Imbuements came back. We keep barraging. And we're clear. Now, realistically, that, uh, that group of enemies... You know, especially at level 63 for a lot of builds would not really be possible, but it has been made possible by all the uh, all the stats that I have going on on my gear, the aspects and my abilities. Now, with that in mind, let me show you what I have going on for my for my actual gear. Keep in mind, this has no uniques at this time, zero uniques. And I got almost all of this gear from one single uh, one single Helltide that I did live on my stream today. So it doesn't take much effort to actually get this build together, especially when you're clearing dungeons to get the aspects for your codex. A lot of the aspects I have are from codexes. All right, so for my helmet here, um, the, the uh, role I have on this is actually under-leveled. 
and I don't know why because I imprinted this from my codex directly. I don't know why this went this way. But the big thing is, is I have 6.5 cooldown reduction, 15% extra basic skill attack speed. You don't need to worry about basic skill attack damage because you're not worrying about the damage for that. You want the speed to build up those combo points. I do have 12% increased healing received. That goes very well with the passive that I have in my abilities and my skill tree. You know, that uh, that damage, that, that or I'm sorry, that critical strike damage that heals me for 3% every time I do it. Yes, that goes very well with that. And then 6% extra total armor. These are very good things that you want to see on your helmets. And then I have the, uh, you know, the barrier for damaging an elite. That just helps out with survivability against elites, especially if they're higher level than you. Uh, this next one. I actually found a perfect role for Aspect of Disobedience, so I threw it on here, where you gain 0.5% increased armor for 4 seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking up to 50%. So, because of how quickly we're attacking, we throw out 3 of these blades with basic attack, and between 5 and 8 arrows, depending on combo points with Barrage, that can be built up to 50% extra armor within a second. It's so fast that you get all that extra armor. So, it's very effective to have that on there. And then the stats that we have, I have 10.3 damage reduction, 12% damage with dual-wielded weapons. I mean, that's that's kind of a wasted stat on this, but it's a thing. And then 12.7% damage with ranged weapons, which goes very well with my, my main bow here. And then 23 all stats. Just kind of nice to have, you know, all stats extra. Okay, the gloves are very important here. The big thing you need to worry about with the gloves is critical strike chance. Get the highest possible critical strike chance that you can on the gloves. This same idea goes with the rings. This is where you get as much critical strike chance as possible. I have 60 willpower, 21 all stats, and then 7.8% attack speed. Again, that helps with building up the combo points. And then I have the aspect of the expect expectant rolled on here attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill cast by nine percent up to thirty percent it's between five and ten percent obviously you want that ten percent if possible but the highest roll i've been able to find so far is nine now the reason why you want aspect of the expectant is because you're building up combo points anyway you have to attack three times right and so because of that i'm getting nine times three is 27 Every time I do this one, two, three, and then barrage, that's 27% extra damage on that barrage because I'm getting these combo points. So 27% extra damage on top of the three combo point damage. That's a huge damage spike and you don't want to miss out on that. And then we have the legs. I have the aspect of might on here. Basic skills grant 20% extra damage reduction for two seconds. This is a bottom tier roll. This is directly out of my codex, just like a couple other things here. This is, you know, if you can find a higher roll for it, it's very good. But that extra damage reduction, 20% extra damage reduction is very good because you're doing your basic skills like crazy anyway. Again, it's stacking with what you're doing here already. This right here, one, two, three. So for two seconds, up to six seconds, you're getting 20% extra damage reduction. That is incredibly powerful. And then I have, for, you know, for the stats, I have 5.4% dodge chance, 27.8 damage reduction from distant enemies, 4.6% total armor, and then almost 10% damage reduction, universal damage reduction. And you're seeing a trend here, right? With a lot of the armor pieces, I'm focusing on armor and damage reduction. This is what hap this is what helps with survivability against higher level enemies. This is something that you very much so want, especially if you're in hardcore mode, do not skip out on these, you need these. But these also help out, I mean, I'm level 63, already fighting things at level 75, and I can very clearly fight things much higher. I wouldn't doubt if this build can take on level 85 enemies already. And then for the boots, um, I have energy cost reduction, some shadow resistance, four ranks of shadow step. I mean, that's not a very important thing to have, uh, aside from reducing the cooldown if you want to. Um, that's that's something that's up to you. I, I only left it on there because the other role that I had on there was like poison resistance or something, and I found that to be useless in the moment. And then 21% movement speed. You definitely want movement speed on there, and if you can prioritize getting boots that have extra evades for you, that's going to be even better. So try to get that. And then I do have the aspect of runic cleats, or I'm sorry, <laughs> aspect of wind striker. I read this backwards. Um, 
It says critical strikes grant 14% movement speed for one second up to six seconds. And again, because of all the critical strikes you're throwing out everywhere, you're going to be able to have that extra movement speed so you can navigate the battlefield that much better. It's something that if you're in a, in a situation where you need to get out because you're just overwhelmed, then that allows you to run free because you're going to be... I'm not saying that critical strikes are guaranteed, but your chances for critical strikes are so high because of all the things that you're throwing out everywhere. So this allows you to just kind of get in or out as you need to. Now, the bow I'm not so happy about. I'm only using it because I found a very high item power bow right away after entering World Tier 4. I would much prefer a crossbow because a crossbow has natural vulnerable damage built into it, whereas bows have damage to distant enemies. I'm not complaining about extra damage to distant enemies, but this build is more around melee range, and so this is not like a great bonus to have, but it's there all the same. Um, I definitely prefer a crossbow for this build. And then the stats I focused on here are vulnerable damage, damage to close enemies, overpower damage, which... Uh, again, the, like, overpower is not great for this build, but it's just kind of there for now. That's what I have. It's, you know, just kind of stuck with what I've got for now until I find something better. And then critical strike damage with imbued skills. That's very nice to have because, you know, a lot of the damage from this is imbued. And so, you know, that's extra, extra damage on top of it all. And then I have the aspect of the edge master, which skills deal up to X amount of damage in X amount of increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the max benefit while you have full primary resource. This just helps you open up fights in a big way and gives you that much more extra damage based on how much, you know, energy that you have when you cast, you know, your skill. And so that's something that it goes a very long way having that on, specifically on a two-handed weapon, because it doubles the values. Usually this is 10 to 20%, but on a two-handed weapon, it's 20 to 40 I'm hoping that I can find, you know, a higher role for this one very soon, especially on a crossbow. For the amulet, right now we've got uh, Aspect of Accelerating. Critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by 30% for 5 seconds. Um, and the amulets increase the stats of this, uh, of things by 50%. Uh, usually I think it's 15 to 25%. Yeah, 15 to 25% for five seconds. But again, because it's on the amulet, it adds 50, uh, you know, 50% on there. Now, this is very good because critical strikes with core skills, increasing your attack speed just makes it so you're going to get to your next barrage that much faster. Because when you do a, bar you know, a barrage, you're getting a lot of critical strikes and then you're throwing more of these and then you're doing another one and you're just building up your, your attack speed naturally. You're getting a lot of attack speed really fast and you're just zooming through your attacks end up so fast that you're you're gonna end up miscounting sometimes so do be aware of that but it just goes so quickly that this is worth having on there it just adds so much and then on the amulet right now i have seven and a half percent extra damage 12.7 marksman skill damage 7.7 percent strength and then two ranks of all agility skills that's where another, you know, another little bit of the shadow step stuff comes from. That's not a great stat to have on the amulet. Specifically, I would much rather something else like, you know, cooldown reduction or something, but that is what it is for now. Just like with the gauntlets, like I said earlier, the number one thing you need to have on your rings is critical strike chance. If you can also get vulnerable damage and critical strike damage on there, that's very good to have. I also have physical damage on this one that definitely helps with just the flat damage of my basic skills and barrage. Uh, but this one has the aspect of corruption. Imbuement skill effects have 30% increased potency against vulnerable enemies, which again, you're making everything vulnerable as it is with so many other things. Why not get that extra damage against them for free? So definitely use that. That's that's such a high that's such a high amount of damage for free. It's between 20 and 40%. I've got a mid-roll of 30 right now, but it's already shown so effective. It's it's a wonderful thing. On this ring, we've got critical strike chance, max life, critical strike damage, and physical damage. So it's just spiking up my damage and a little bit of uh, a little bit of tankiness on the life. But I have the aspect, uh, the the rapid aspect on this one. Basic skills gain 21% attack speed. This one is completely for free. Yeah, this one is completely for free. Let me just show you. This is my attack speed without it. This is my attack speed with it. Without. With. 
it's a noticeable difference and that's only 21 percent so imagine what you can get when you actually build up this one where you can get another 23 to 38 on your amulet right and i don't know if you know accelerating is best on the amulet it's just where i have it because i like to build up those combo points really quickly right and so it's already very effective now on to the two one-handed weapons i choose to use two daggers because daggers do have the fastest attacks per second anyway so that increases your attack speed even more but these are essentially stat sticks uh, what that means is you're not really focusing on using the daggers themselves because your basic attacks are not really key to what's going on here but they're giving you extra stats that are going to be passively there and effective for your build anyway so I chose daggers specifically because they give you extra damage to close enemies. As you can see, they have that naturally built on there. But also, I focused on extra vulnerable damage, some dexterity for that extra skill damage. I have overpower damage, which is a kind of a wasted stat here, unfortunately. And then critical strike damage. On this one, I've got, you know, more damage to close enemies, more dexterity, more critical strike damage, and then 22.8 critical strike damage with imbued skills. The aspect on this one is the aspect of arrow storms. Your marksman skills have a 10% chance to create an arrow storm at the enemy's location, dealing X amount of damage, physical damage over three seconds. You can now have up to you can have up to five active arrow storms. This is basically it's just raining arrows on your enemies uh, when you get that lucky hit, and it, it it does say 10%, but trust me when I say it happens more often than you think. Because, again, think of all the, all the things that are going out everywhere. All these barrage arrows, between 5 and 8, depending on your combo points, all these barrage arrows everywhere, that's, that's basically up to 8 rolls per barrage at 10%. Just, so just imagine, you know, how often this can actually proc. It's actually good. It, it's actually really solid and has a lot of free damage. And then on this one, I have the aspect of branching volleys barrages arrows have a x amount of chance to split into two arrows whenever they ricochet instead of just one they can split into two when this procs this is straight out of my codex i haven't found anything better than 15 percent as of yet but if i can get 25 i can imagine this is going to only make the damage skyrocket that much more because you're getting that many more arrows just bouncing around everywhere i find that to be pretty integral to this build as well because even even though it doesn't proc a lot, that 15% chance is still higher than it may seem. It's just that much more extra damage that's going to be bouncing around against all these enemies on your screen. It's a wonderful thing. And then, of course, I do focus on a lot of the emeralds because they, you know, they add that critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. I love that. And then I have a bunch of rubies on the armor pieces because, you know, that extra percentage max life just helps out a lot with survivability. Rogues, you know... Rogues are generally squishy, so I've tried everything that I can to make this tankier, including upping upping the health, and that's proven pretty well for me so far. And then over here we have the you know the skulls socketed for all that extra armor, because armor goes a long way. As you can see, you know I've got 5,337 armor at level 63 on a rogue, so this character is pretty tanky despite being a rogue, which is wonderful. And that's pretty much the build. If you'd like to see, uh, I can go fight some more enemies real quick. Just kind of show you what this build is capable of. Just to kind of show you a little bit of stuff here. A lot of these enemies die before you're able to really get a good flow going. That's how effective it is right now. Everyone gather around. These guys have the armor. Let me just take these guys out quickly. Even when you're not using imbuements, the damage is really great. The whole idea is just getting up in their faces after you, uh, you know, imbue everything with shadow and just shotgunning them with barrage. It just does so much damage so quickly. Plant the trap there. Why not? And so yeah, this is my current rudimentary barrage build. It's highly effective so far. I'm liking it a lot. Let's freeze that guy. Do some uh, barrage. 
the big thing about this build is because you're in the middle of everything sometimes you're going to find that moving around the battlefield is going to be a little bit dubious but that's where your movement speed comes into play it allows you to kind of get in and out of the fight so again do not skip out on the movement speed here i just used the wrong imbuement here but it's fine You can just see the vulnerability popping up on every enemy. Just clearing everything out really effectively. Now again, I know this isn't like super endgame stuff, but overall, this build at this level does very well and is only going to get better from here as I find higher roles, as well as I kind of make different choices on different aspects and things that might make more sense on here. What will likely happen is I will update this later on after I get to level 80 or so, with any improvements that I may have made, specifically on a crossbow and any changes to aspect and stats that I may choose. So anyways, that's my guide for my rogue currently. I hope this video helps you out if you're interested in this build. Thank you for choosing my video to watch. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the likes, comments, and subscribes on my channel for this. Thank you guys for joining me for this, and I'll see you soon for the next one.